doing? How y'all doing on this thankful Thursday? Amen. I thank God again for just having the opportunity just to be in the land of the living once again. But most of all, just to be able to give God what to do him. The glory, the honor, and the praise. I thank God for all of you that are going to be on tonight. As always, I ask that you like, tag, share this video, amen, show some love, amen, for the word that's going to go forward on tonight. When I tell you that God is good, that God is awesome, I didn't even really know what word that he was going to give me for tonight, but I just stayed in prayer. I just stayed in prayer and just spent time with the Lord all day to day, just saying, Lord, what is it? What are you saying? What are you speaking? And I happened to see a video. And when I saw this live video, Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, this is the word for tonight. That there's something that God is doing. It's not traditional. It's not religious. It's not comprehensible. It's not even understandable. But there's something that God is doing and how he's moving that I'm telling y'all, it's almost like fasten your seatbelt and let God be God. Because how he's doing it and how he's orchestrating it, it will blow your mind. That's why he told us, don't lean to your own understanding. He said, but in all your ways, if you acknowledge him, then by way of Holy Spirit, he's going to direct your path. That simply means that we are going to experience some things that we don't quite understand. We're going to experience some things that we can't quite put our finger on it. We are going to experience some things where God will send us on an Abrahamic journey where you don't know where you're going to end up, where you're going, how long you're going to be, how long you're going to stay, or you, what uh, you're going to leave on which day. You're not going to have any of the details, but he's going to tell you, now therefore go, and I will be with your mouth, and I will teach you what you shall say. That means that in that self-same hour, in that assignment that he sends you on, that it's going to be a walk of faith. It's going to be where you walk by faith and not by sight. I'm talking about it's going to be a glorious time. Now, you might look at it now and say, you know what? This is the hardest time I've ever had to go through. You might look at it and say, you know what? I have never dealt with this kind of stuff in my life. But guess what? You're in a good place and you're in a perfect place because what it is is that that's how God gets his glory because he takes your story. He will put you in the worst part of it, in the deepest of the depth of it, and then he will take you and bring you back up to heights unknown. He will bring you back up to a place that you've never known. He will bring you back up to a place that you won't even be able to recognize yourself. I'm telling you, I am going to encourage somebody in the Lord tonight. You know, a lot of times like David, we have to encourage ourselves in the Lord. But God says not tonight. He said not tonight. You're not going to have to encourage yourself in the Lord tonight. Because he said that he has vessels that he's sending in order to encourage you when you can't find the strength to encourage yourself. God is not going to allow us to fail and fall and falter. He's not going to allow us to back up and act up and slack up. But what he's going to do is he's going to put a supernatural second wind on the inside of us. That in the midst of you thinking that it's all said and done when you forget that the battle's already won he said that he is going to come in and he's going to show you what he can do because it's going to be well done I came to encourage you on tonight make sure you share this video make sure you let somebody know that there's a word, huh? there's a word of encouragement on tonight. Huh? There's a word that God is speaking to the remnant on tonight. Huh? There's a word that God is speaking to those that are castaways, huh? those that have been cast out and thrown out, huh? those that have been left for dead, huh? those that are afraid, huh? all of the ones that are going through these things where they all caught up in their own head. Huh? God says that he wants you to know and stand on what he said, huh? that you are not dead, huh? but you shall live and not die and declare his works. Huh? So I'm excited on tonight. I'm excited about this word that he gave me because I know that somebody's going to be blessed. I know that somebody 
was just thinking about giving up. Somebody was just thinking about throwing in the towel. Somebody was just thinking about, uh, you know what I'm saying, just ending it all. But let me tell you something. Don't you dare. Don't you do it. You make sure that if you know anybody that's dealing with depression and oppression, uh, those that you know that are going through some things right now and they're at their lowest point, uh, I need you to get this video to them. I need you to get this word to him because I guarantee you that when God speaks the word that he gave me on tonight, it's going to help somebody to be able to win this fight. It's going to help somebody to be able to go with the power and the might that God gave them. I'm talking about somebody that needs peace tonight. Somebody that needs joy unspeakable and full of glory. I got to get into this word and then I got to do prayer. I'm just excited because I know that God is going to move tonight. I know that by way of Holy Spirit God is going to speak tonight. I know that God is going to let his people know that he has not forgotten them. He's going to let his people know that he still has a plan for their lives. He's going to let his people know that many are the afflictions of the righteous but he's going to deliver them out of them all. Come on, he said, though a just man falls seven times, uh, come on, God is going to continue uh, to raise you up. I'm talking about you're going to be like a boomerang. Uh, I'm talking about people going to see you and before you know it, you're going to go out one way, you're going to come right back stronger than you went. Uh, I'm talking about God is going to do some things in and through us. Uh, I'm talking to the remnant on tonight. Um, I'm talking to those that are least likely to succeed. Uh, I'm talking about those that are left because uh, they've been cut. Uh, those that are left because they've been injured. Uh, those that are left because they've been talked about. Uh, those that have been left because they've been betrayed. Uh, I'm talking about those that don't know which way to turn tonight. There is a word. There is a word. Amen. Father God, I come to you right now in the name of Jesus. Father God, I come thanking you, God, for another opportunity. I thank you, oh God, tonight. Because I know that it's only by your power and by your might. God, I know that this is a day that you have made and I have made a choice to rejoice and be glad in it. In the midst of the situation, in the midst of the circumstance, even in the things that we don't understand. God, I thank you tonight, God, that you're making your way plan. I thank you tonight, God, that your word is going to live, that your word is going to speak, that the vision is going to speak and not lie. And though it tarry, God, I thank you that you're giving us what we need to wait on you. God, I thank you tonight, God. I thank you for making provision for the vision. I thank you tonight, oh God, for speaking to your people. I thank you tonight, God, for encouraging those uh, that are in the verge of giving up, that are on the verge of throwing in the towel, those, God, that are seeking you and they feel like they can't find you. God, I thank you tonight, oh God, that you're moving by way of Holy Spirit. I thank you tonight, God, that you're giving them new vision. You're giving them a new understanding. You're giving them new peace. You're giving them new wisdom. God, I thank you, oh God, that all things will become new, God. Father God, I thank you that all things are passed away. I thank you, oh God, that all of that decay, all of those things that came to take away, I thank you, God, that you're causing increase tonight. And God, I ask, oh God, that you move by way of Holy Spirit. God, that you touch, God, everybody that needs a touch on tonight. That you would heal the brokenhearted. Father God, that you would, God, raise up those, God, that are in low places. Raise up those, God, that have lost hope. God, raise up those, God, that feel like they're in a place of being alone. God, raise them up and encourage them, oh God. And God, I thank you tonight and I give you glory. I praise you in advance. I praise you in advance for every soul that's going to be saved on tonight. I praise you in advance for every prayer that's going to be answered tonight. I praise you in advance for every, every body that's going to be healed tonight. I thank you tonight for everyone held captive that's going to be set free tonight. I thank you, oh God, for how your anointing is going to flow. I thank you, oh God, that there's nowhere that, that, that they can be found that you can't reach them. I thank you, God, that you have the power to go into the deepest depths, into the lowest of the lowest. 
I thank you, God, that your grace and your mercy covers us. Um, your grace and your mercy follows us. Um, your grace and your mercy chase us. Um, God, that when we think that it's all over, that you're getting ready to retell the story. You're getting ready, God, to revive us. You're getting ready, God, to restore us. Uh, you're getting ready, God, to replenish us. Uh, you're getting ready, God, to do all the things that we need done that we can bring glory to your name. So, God, I thank you tonight. I thank you, God, for those that are behind bars on tonight, God, those that you're touching. I thank you, oh, God, for those that are in the hospitals, God, those that have been left for dead, those that have been told that there's nothing more that the doctors can do. I thank you, oh, God, that you are Dr. Jesus. Um, I thank you, oh, God, that you have the power to resurrect the dead. Um, I thank you, oh, God, that it's not over until you say it's over. I thank you, oh, God, that you're showing yourself strong and mighty. I thank you, oh God, that you're even speaking, oh God, through situations. Father God, even as the story that was told, God, just recently about somebody that came back to life while they were in the morgue. God, I know, God, that you're still calling out Lazarus. I know, God, that you're still raising from the dead. So, Father God, I thank you tonight, God, that you're going to cause us to lean not to our own understanding. You're going to cause us to get out our own head. Father God, that we will be able to walk by faith. That we will be able to do what it is that you called us to do. That we will be able to see what you tell us to see, God. I thank you right now, God, that you're opening blinded eyes. That you're opening up deaf ears. That you're causing the mute to talk. That you're causing, God, those that are crippled to walk. I thank you, God, that you're doing supernatural miracle signs and wonders. But God, most of all tonight, God, I thank you for your peace that passes all understanding. I thank you for your peace, God, that in the midst of whatever war, whatever turmoil, whatever stress, whatever battle that we might be facing on tonight, God, uh, I thank you, oh God, because you said you would give us peace that passes all understanding. You would give us peace uh, in the midst of the storm. So God, I thank you tonight. I thank you tonight that those that you have already divinely orchestrated to, to view this live, those that you have divinely orchestrated uh, to take part and to hear this word for tonight, uh, I thank you in advance, God, for their deliverance. Uh, I thank you in advance, God, for their healing. Uh, I thank you in advance, God, for their miracle. And Father God, let them know that you are right there. Uh, let them know, God, that you are faithful. You said you'd never leave us, nor would you forsake us. Uh, but you said you would be with us until the end of the world. So tonight I thank you God for touching mothers and fathers, sisters and brothers. I thank you God for touching everybody, oh God, that's in need of a touch on tonight. Everybody that's in need of a rhema word on tonight. Father God, those that hear everything, those that see everything, but they fail to hear you and they fail to see you. Father God, I ask right now, God, that you would sharpen Lord, and enlighten God, enlighten their eyes tonight, God. Father God, that you would give them the vision that you would have them to have, God. Father God, I thank you right now, oh God, that you would cause us to be forward focused, uh, that we will be focused on you. Father God, that we will know what to receive and what not to receive. We will know what to believe and what not to believe. We will know where to turn and where not to turn. We will know where to go and where not to go. We will know when to stand and when not to stand. We will know how to pray. We will know how to do it your way. God, I thank you tonight, God, for victory that you've given us, victory over all of Satan's attacks, victory where the enemy can't even do anything to us, victory where every weapon formed against us can't prosper, victory where every curse will be reversed. I'm talking about victory. I thank you, God, tonight. And I thank you, oh God, for unity and oneness. For your word said that where there's unity, there's strength. So, God, I thank you tonight, God, that you're causing us to become strong, God, in you. As we embrace one another, as we uplift one another, as we encourage one another, as we forgive one another, as we love one another. For, Father God, you said in your word that they shall know you by the way, they shall know that we know you by the way that we love each other. So, God, I thank you right now, God, that you're teaching us to love in a new way. You're teaching us to live in a new way. You're teaching us to give in a new way. But most of all, God, I thank you because you're teaching us how to walk by faith and not by sight. 
You're teaching us, oh God, how to walk in a way that's pleasing in your sight. So on tonight, God, I surrender to you now. Father God, that it be all of you and none of me. I surrender this vessel to you now, God. Father God, that you get the glory out of every word said. Father God, let me decrease as your Holy Spirit increase within me. Father God, I ask that you would use this vessel of clay, God, and have your way. I thank you tonight, and I give you glory, honor, and praise. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen and amen. Amen. I thank God for all of you that are on on tonight. Amen. I'm, 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 already, I'm already full. Y'all, I'm already full because of the, the impact of this message. I'm already full because of how God just hit me with it. And when he hit me with it, he gives me these revelations. Like he will take the simplest things and just cause you to just get a divine revelation from something that you never even thought about before. Something that you never even considered. It just makes you say, wow. Like, God, I never thought of that. And then it makes you excited to know that God is still in the miracle working business. God has your name written in the Lamb's book of life. God has your name. He has you on his mind. And no matter how it looks, no matter how it seems, God says that he is right there with you. He is going to pull you through and you're going you to come out victorious. He said to let you know you're going to come out victorious. He said, people are talking about your grain exit. He said, but oh my God, he going to silence them in your grand entrance. Huh? Because sometimes you got to exit a thing to enter a thing. Huh? Sometimes you got to go through some stuff on one level to get to the next level. God said to tell you tonight huh, that he's going to release in peace. Huh? He said he's going to release in peace. Huh? It's going to be some things that you're going to have to release. Huh? But he said he's going to give you peace in the midst of that release. Huh? God said that even though it might look like turmoil, it it might look like you're in a ship that's going down. God said, but he is the one that can speak peace to the storm. He's the one that can say, peace, be still. Even though it looks like you might be sinking. Come on, even though you might get to the point like the disciples and ask Jesus, care is not that, that we perish. But God says that he is with you. He said, this is a season that you're going to walk on water. This is a season that if you stay focused on God, if you stay forward focused on him. Uh, he said, you're going to do some stuff that people have never seen before. <laughs> he said, you're going to walk in some tangible, you're going to see tangible miracles uh, through a tangible anointing uh, that you never even thought of. Uh, you had dreams about it. You even had visions about it. Uh, but you never truly embraced it. Uh, you never truly experienced it. Uh, God said, oh, but when there's a place in him, he said there's a place in him where you're going to start seeing miracle after miracle. You're going to start seeing arms grow out. You're going to start seeing legs that had no life in them. You're going to start seeing people running and praising God. God says you're going to start seeing people with disfigured faces. Where their faces going to come together. Everything in this place. He said a lot of things that he's about to do in and through you. But he said he got to make you ready. You see and that's the point that we don't want. We don't want the making ready part. Because the making ready part is a part that hurts. The making ready part is a part that stretches you. The making ready part is a part that tries you. The making ready part is a part that's going to cause you to shed some tears. The making ready part is going to cause some people that love you to hurt you, to backstab you. Come on, there's going to be some things in the making you ready. But God says that in the midst of making you ready, that he is about to get you to a place in him. I'm talking about the point of no return. 
I'm trying to get to my message tonight, y'all. But God has me so full on tonight because I know that God wants somebody to grab this word. Uh, somebody to grab this word uh, and hold on. Uh, having done all to stand, to stand there for. Uh, oh, yeah, even in the midst of your weakness, God said he'll be your strength. Uh, in the midst of you feeling like you can't go no more. Uh, in the midst of you feeling like, God, why do you have me here? Uh, God says he had you here for a purpose and a plan. Uh, he has you here because he is going to take you by the hand. Uh, he has you here because he has a specific place that he's taken you uh, and only he knows where you're going to land. So tonight we give God glory. Uh, tonight we give God glory because there's going to be a release uh, in peace. Uh, there's going to be peace uh, in the release. Uh, there's going to be a release of peace, uh, but there's going to be peace in the release. Uh, and the word that God gave me as we go to the word of God, amen, because I always take it from the word, amen, because God is his word uh, and his word will not return void, but it will accomplish that for which it was sent. Uh, so we always want to make sure uh, that when God is speaking, he is his word. Uh, so it's going to come through the word. Come on. It's going to come through the word. It's going to come from the word. And it's going to be in the word. Amen. Hallelujah. Philippians, the fourth chapter, and I will be reading verses four through nine. Philippians, the fourth chapter, I will be reading verses four through nine. And it reads as follows. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing, <clears throat> excuse me, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. Verse 7 says, And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Verse 8, Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, Whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of a good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. And verse 9, those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do. And the God of peace shall be with you. And the God of peace shall be with you. The God of peace shall be with you. Now, this is what God showed me. Now, I need you, I'm going to take you on a journey, so I need y'all to just hold on. I need you to just hold on, and I need you to see this thing. I want you to see it the way God showed it to me. I want you to see it the way he envisioned it to me. How many of you ever been to a balloon release? He showed me a balloon release. <clears throat> He said, and what he's doing now is um, he's doing a divine release. Uh, and he showed me in a balloon release, uh, when we get all the air in the balloon. Uh, now, this right here is for somebody. <clears throat> because a balloon has a certain capacity. That means it's going to hold a certain amount of air, a certain amount of helium, uh, and then it can't hold no more. So it gets to the point to where you got to know you got to be sensitive to know how far it can go. You got to be sensitive and watch and be mindful how far it can stretch. And once it gets to the full capacity, you got to tie it up and let it go release it. Tie it up and let it go release it. Why? Because if you keep blowing in it and blowing in it and blowing in it and you're blowing past the capacity, it's going to burst and then it's of no use. So, so God said that that's what he's doing is that he's showing you that what's happening now with his remnant uh, is that he's doing a balloon release. That means that there are some of us um, that we have balloons and there's different size balloons and all our balloons don't look the same and all of them don't hold the same capacity. But in the midst of it, he said he's had us to blow into these balloons. Uh, I'm talking about these brick and mortars. Uh, I'm talking about these buildings. Uh, come on, I'm talking about these businesses. Uh, I'm talking about these plans. Uh, he's had us to blow in. Uh, and as we're blowing in, uh, we're releasing. Uh, we're releasing. Uh, we're becoming empty because we're taking everything in us and we're blowing into these balloons. Uh, and he showed me even in ministry here that there are some of us that we blow into the ministry here. All of our finances, uh, come on, all, all of our our, our 
our works. Uh, we blow in all of our time. Uh, we blow in all of our talents. Uh, we blow in everything that we have. Uh, and we're blowing into it. Uh, but God said that there are some of us uh, that when you're blowing into that balloon, uh, that there comes a time when he will let you know when it's reaching capacity, when it starts to get to the point to where it looks like you're blowing, uh, but it's not getting no bigger. When it looks like you're blowing and it's not getting any bigger, he said that's because it's time to tie it up and let it go. It's time to release it and let it go. Because there are some people that are made for the four walls. Uh, there are some people that are made for confined spaces. Uh, there are some people that are made for communities. Uh, there are some people that are made for smaller things, uh, smaller visions, uh, smaller projects. Uh, but there are others uh, that God uh, said that I got you blowing into this balloon uh, because when it comes time, uh, he said there's going to be a balloon release. Uh, and when you release that balloon, uh, one thing you got to realize is that when the time comes to release it, Come on, it might be uncomfortable because you don't really want to release it. Huh? Nobody wants to have a balloon released because a lot of times when you're releasing a balloon, that's pain. Huh? When you're releasing the balloon, that means somebody's unalive. Huh? When you're releasing... When you're releasing a balloon, that means you've lost somebody dear to you. So nobody wants to really be in a place of releasing a balloon. So God says that in the midst of you releasing that balloon, what he's saying is that once it is released, you watch it go up. You watch it go up until you can't see it no more. And I said, God, I said, well, what happens to the balloon after you can't see it no more? And it says what happens is that it goes to a certain part it goes up a certain way, and some of them can even stay up there for two to three days. But it goes up to a certain place, and then it'll pop. He said, but then the ones that don't pop, there are some of them that what they'll do is they'll land. And when they land, they'll still be intact. They'll still look untouched. They'll still look unstretched. They'll still look like nobody blew into them. They'll still look like they could be used all over again. He said, but in the midst of it, he said that they fall back along coastlines and beaches and waterways. Come on, nobody knows where they're going to fall. Nobody knows where they're going to land. And that's what God is saying that he's doing with the remnant on tonight. He said some of y'all because of a global anointing, because of a global ministry, because of a global movement, he's telling you that your balloon has reached its capacity. He's telling you that your balloon is time to tie it up and release it. He said he's going to take care of whatever's left. He's going to take care of how far it's going to go, but he needs you to release it. And a lot of times what happens to us is we don't want to release it. We want to hold on to it. We don't want to get to the point to where we got to trust God all the way. We don't want to get to the point where we got to say, God, I'm just going to let go and let you. We don't want to get to the point where we don't know what's going to happen to it. But God said, I just need you to release it. He said, I gave it to you. He said, I even gave you the air that you blew in it. I even gave you the substance that you threw into it. I even gave you everything that you sold into it. He said, I gave it to you because I needed it to blow up. He said, but once it blow up, it gotta, it gotta go up. He said, you gotta stop holding it down. You gotta stop trying to keep it confined. He said, but I need you to let it go and let me do what I want to do in and through it. Because once it gets up there and it pops up, Everything that is in it uh, is spread everywhere. Uh, nobody knows where it's going to land. Uh, nobody knows what piece is going to land there, what's going to land over here, uh, how much prayer going to land over here, what miracles going to go over there, what anointing is going to come here. Nobody knows what happens to it after the balloon release. Uh, but there's a peace after the release. Uh, there's a peace to know that once you release it to God, uh, he's going to do well with it. Uh, once you release it to God, he's going to make something big out of it. Once you release it to God, it won't die. Once you release it to God, it won't return void. So God is saying tonight that just like that balloon release, he said there are some people that he's giving a piece in the release. And what he's doing is he's taking you to another level in him. And as he takes you to another level in him, he's saying that on this level, 
On this level, the reason why you got to go up where nobody can find you is because you don't need Job's comforters. Huh? You don't need Job's friends. Huh? You don't need those in your ear trying to tell you why what's happening to you is happening to you. Telling you why you lost this and why you lost that. You don't need them. No, you don't need them. Huh? You got to go to Psalms 91. Huh? You got to hide under the shadow of the Almighty. Come on, you got to go in your secret place. Huh? And that's where nobody can see you. They don't know where you went. Huh? But one thing they know is just like Jesus rose, you rose. Huh? One thing they know is that wherever you you go, the Holy Spirit goes. Come on, wherever you go, God knows. So in the midst of you going where you're going, in the midst of you being headed where you're headed, you might not be able to see. You might not even be able to see where you're headed. You might not be able to see where you're going. But God said he's going to give you peace in the release. He's going to give you peace in the release. So no matter how the enemy tries to make it look like it's not God. People will come to you and say, well, if it's God, it'll last. Do you know how many stuff that's not God that lasts? Come on, they got visions that's not God that lasts. Come on, they got projects that's going on that's not God that lasts. They got marriages that's together that's not God and they last. Come on, they got churches that's open that have Ichabod written all over them. You can't go by that because God says that he has an appointed time. He said the vision is yet for an appointed time and though it tarry he said wait for it for it shall speak and not lie you don't know the amount of time that God says now is the appointed time you don't know when it's the time for somebody to let go and let God you don't know when it's time for somebody to release their balloon you don't know so you need to stay focused on you and let them stay focused on them because maybe your balloon ain't big as they balloon maybe your balloon can't hold the capacity that their balloon can hold uh, maybe your vision is not going to the place uh, that their vision is going to. Uh, come on, you can't let people speak into you uh, and they're going nowhere. You can't let people speak into you uh, and they have no vision themselves. Uh, but you got to be able to hear God for yourself. Uh, that's where your peace going to come from. Uh, so when it looked like, uh, it looked like in your purpose uh, is birth and pain. Let me tell you something. God has a plan in that pain. God has a plan. He has a divine purpose. Uh, so a lot of times when we talk about uh, and we say, you know what? Uh, we said promotion comes from the Lord. Uh, don't you know that promotion comes from God? Uh, but guess what? Uh, sometimes promotion uh, comes through pain. Uh, sometimes promotion uh, comes through losing somebody. Sometimes promotion comes through disappointment. Oh, God. Uh, sometimes promotion comes through rejection. Uh, sometimes promotion comes through being left alone. Sometimes promotion comes from being lied to. Sometimes promotion comes from being betrayed. So you can't always identify because you're not God. You don't know why the person is going through what they're going through. Oh, but you better stay focused on you because you don't know that that could be their point of God saying, tie it up and release it. Tie it up and let it go. God says because in the midst of it all, he said that it's going to go to places unknown. He said your gift will make room for you and bring you before great men. He said many people look at you at face value. They look at you where you are now. They think because you came from a small place. But God says that he takes the small things. Little becomes much when you place it in the master's hands. He takes the foolish things to confound the wise. He would take me, a ninth grade dropout, teenage runaway, mother at 16, and he would take my life and cause it to bring glory to his name. I'm talking about a little girl stuttering in school, couldn't stand when the teacher called my name to read because I knew I was going to have a struggle getting the words out. But God says that's the kind of God I am. He said if you would just release it to me, if you would just give it to me, he said I will cause it to blow your mind. And, uh, that's what I'm talking about when I say a global movement. Uh, I'm talking about spiritual improvement. Uh, I'm talking about God moving like never before. And he's saying that in the midst of your tears, in the midst of you loving people with your whole heart, in the midst of you giving your last to people that wouldn't give their most to you, in the midst of everything that you're going through, God said that there's a greater purpose uh, and there's a greater plan. Uh, that's the reason why he breathes on us. Uh, he breathed on us so we could breathe 
to others. Uh, he breathes on us uh, the breath of life. Uh, that's what we pour into those balloons, uh, the breath of life. Uh, we pour and breathe into those balloons uh, and we watch them grow and we watch them expand uh, and we watch them become something beautiful. And then we look at it uh, and we say, oh God, uh, I just want to continue to see it grow. I just want to continue to see it get bigger and bigger and bigger. I just want to hold on to it. I want to hold on to it. But God says, no, everything has its time. Everything has its season. Don't let people fool you into thinking that because you had to go and let go of your balloon, that that means that it wasn't God. That's a lie straight from the pits of Hades. Uh, that does not mean that it wasn't God. Uh, what it simply means is uh, that God is taking you to another level. Uh, higher heights and deeper depths. Um, that means that God is taking you to a place in him. Uh, a place of no return. Uh, where somebody would say, I am so lost in God right now uh, that I can't find myself. Uh, God is trying to take us to a place in him uh, that nobody, no demon, uh, no demon. Devil. Nobody can pull us down. Once you release the balloon and it has that helium in it and it starts to go up, it's no reverse. It's not coming back down the same way it went up. It's not coming back down in the same state it went up. So you watch out for those that you see it look like. It looks like their balloons are just going up. It looks like you don't know what's going to happen to them next. It looks like they might not survive. You better keep your eyes eyes on them because that's why God said I'm going to prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemies because of the fact that he's going to allow the whole world to see what it is that he has planned for you. He's going to allow the whole world to see the vision that he spoke to you. So it's okay. It's okay. If God gave you global, if God spoke global, then guess what? You got to be ready to let go and let God. You got to be able to move when God says move and don't let nothing hold you back or don't let nothing stop you or block you. Don't let nothing detour you. Or don't let nothing turn you away. Don't let nothing distract you or because God has a bigger plan and a bigger picture. See, everything don't happen A, B, C, D the way we want it to, but the way it happens is the way that God ordained it to. The way it happened is the way that God divinely orchestrated it to. And what God will do is... He will take something uh, and he will take the weirdest way to make it come to pass. Uh, you will say to yourself, God, uh, I understand that you had to, you had to resurrect. Uh, I understand that you had to come back uh, from being unalived. I understand all of that. Uh, but then when you look at the picture, you're saying, but God, but why is it uh, that it looks like um, it had to happen in the worst way? Why it had to happen with so much pain and so much anguish? Why it had to happen that way? But God is saying that in the midst of how bad it looks, in the midst of how ridiculous it seems, in the midst of how painful it is, don't you know that that's how he gets his glory? He gets his glory through your story. He gets his glory through you going through some of the toughest times. He said trials come to make you strong. Come on, he said that he's making you. He's building you. He have you on the potter's wheel. You know, sometimes you got to go through the fire. But in the midst of going through the fire, how many of you know that he said even with the three Hebrew boys, uh, they went through the fire, but when they came out, they didn't smell like smoke. Um, their clothes wasn't burnt. Uh, they didn't look like they had just went through the fire. And God said that's what he does. Uh, but think about how it looks when they're in there. Think, think about how it looks when you're in uh, when you're in your worst time, when you're in that trial, when you're in that battle, when you're in that sickness, but in the midst of being in it, God said he'll bring you through it. 
in the midst of you being in it, he said he'll bring you out of it. God said he just needs you to trust him tonight. He needs you to trust him tonight. Many of y'all may not even know to what extreme I'm talking about tonight. Some of y'all know because you've experienced it. Some of y'all experienced it even right now. But I'm talking about those that even if you don't know what I'm talking about, after tonight you will. Because God would not have me to give this word as he's not about to prepare somebody. Somebody's about to tie that balloon up and let it go. Somebody's about to release it and let it go. Somebody's about to say, God, have your way here. Somebody's about to say, God, I'm going to let go and I'm going to let you do it. I'm going to move when you say move. I'm going to do what you say do. And don't y'all worry about what people got to say because people are going to say what they're going to say anyway. But they, they're they not God. They don't know what God told you. They don't know how God is leading you. They don't know how high God's going to take you. They don't know how far low God's going to let you go. They don't know through what purpose and what plan God has for you. They don't know what process God's going to process you through. So don't you let nobody talk down to you. Don't you let nobody discourage you because of what you're going through. Because what you're going through is the main thing that's going to pull you through. What you're going through is the main thing that's going to propel you to everything that God has for you. So tonight I just came to encourage you as I encourage myself in the Lord. I came to encourage you to let you know that God has not forgotten you. God has not forgotten the promises he made for you. God has not forgotten the plan that he has for you. Plans of good and not evil with an expected end. God has not forgotten you. But he said he needs you to trust him tonight. He said he needs you to trust him tonight. Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ask or think. But it's according to the power that works on the inside of us. How many of you got some power working on the inside of you tonight? That power is the power to say here come what may he I'm going to stay here come what may he I'm going to do whatever it is that God tells me to do and say whatever it is that God tells me to say here come what may he I might not understand it I might not know all the details but one thing I know is that God never fails one thing I know is that if he said it he shall bring it to pass for only what you do for Christ will last so as you go through your seasons as you go through your times uh, of disappointments, as you go through your times uh, of turmoil, as you go through your tumultuous storms, uh, as you go through all the things that you go through, God is saying that he is with you tonight. He is with you tonight. He loves you tonight. He loves you tonight. And he is going to take those people that get to the point of saying, God, I surrender all to you. Those people that get to the point that said, I can't see my way, that God's going to open up your eyes of faith. Those people that say, God, I can't hear your voice. He's about to open up your ears that you can hear what the Spirit is saying unto you. God says, those people that feel like they're standing on their last leg, God says, those people those people that feel like they've done all they could do, he said that he desires to use you. Those people who everybody talked down to, everybody put down, looked down on, frowned on, all those people, all those people that tried to judge you and tell you that you're not real, tell you that you don't hear from God, tell you that you're not saved. Oh, I came to encourage you tonight because they told Jesus the same stuff. Don't you know they called Jesus a devil? Jesus was walking around healing all those that were diseased. Jesus was walking around giving new life. Jesus was walking around giving people brand new beginnings. Uh, Jesus was walking around anointing people. Uh, Jesus was, was there giving them life and life more abundantly and he was still called a devil. Don't you go by what people try to label you, what people try to say about you. All you got to do is know that you know that you know who your God is. Uh, know that you know that you know who, that your God is with you. Uh, that he's right there with you. Uh, that in the storm and in the rain he has you in his hand. Oh, it don't matter. It does not matter. Man's report. Who shall believe the report of the Lord 
Because his report says you're healed. His report says you are delivered. His report says you've already won. Huh? His report says that besides you there is none. Huh? His report says that you are the chosen one. Huh? His report says that when he does it is well done. Huh? His report. Huh? God says whose report will you believe tonight? Whose report will you believe tonight? He said he wants you to release in peace. That means whatever you got to let go, let it go in peace. Whatever you got to disconnect from, disconnect in peace. Whatever you got to turn away from, turn away from it in peace. God says because he is releasing a peace that passes all understanding. So what should have took you out, what should have caused you to lose your mind is going to cause you to find your rightful place in God. It's going to cause you to find that place that God wanted you to be all the time. So it might look like you lost something but you're only going to gain more. You might look like Look like it's the end, uh, but you're just going to begin again. God says as long as we stay focused on him, then we're going to have peace. The peace that passes all understanding. Who when our minds are stayed on him, our minds are stayed on him. That means, hey, I know I'm going through this, uh, but God, I'm going to keep my mind on you. Uh, I'm going to think on these things, uh, things that are lovely, things that are pure, things that are of a good report. Uh, come on. I'm going to, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, I'm going to think on these things. Uh, as he continues to condition our minds, uh, as he continues to renew our minds, uh, to purge our thoughts, uh, come on, to cleanse our hearts, uh, to renew our spirit. Uh, God says that what he's doing is um, he's causing restoration to come forth. Uh, he said that peace that passes all understanding uh, is going to cause you to stand in the midst of your storm. Uh, it's going to cause you to trust him uh, when you don't know what to do. It's going to cause you to smile when you should be crying. It's going to cause you to live when you could have been dying. God said that all the things that you are faced with on tonight, he said it's only a stepping stone in order to get you with him alone. It's only a stepping stone for him to get you with him alone. When you get to the point where it's just you and God, he'll bring you to a place where all you have is him. And when all you have is him, then that means that you might have to turn your back on them because when all you have is him, then only he can get the glory. God says he will share his glory with no man. He said that everybody that sees you, everybody that keeps their eyes on you, all they're going to be able to say is nobody but God. All they're going to be able to say that if it had not been for the Lord on their side, uh -huh, no telling where they would be. I'm talking to some people right now uh, that's just down and out. I'm talking about some people right now uh, that you feel like God then gave up on you. Uh, I'm here to tell you tonight he hasn't. I'm here to tell you tonight he hasn't. All you got to do is be willing to release. Be willing to release. Because it's some, sometimes some things will happen that looks like the worst, but God is going to bring out the best. And as I can recall even a situation where God will cause you to lose something because he's trying to get you to something greater. See, a lot of times we want to hold on to something because we feel like that's it. We feel like that's the greatest. We feel like that's the best. And God says, no, baby, I need you to release it and let it go. I got something better over here. But you're going to have to trust me in the process. It might hurt to release it. Come on. It might cause some sleepless nights to release it. You might have to fast and pray after you release it. But he said, but in the midst of that release, I'm going to give you peace. In the midst of that release, I'm going to give you double for your trust. In the midst of that release, I'm going to even give you triple for your trouble. He said, but you got to get to the point to where you know when to release, uh, you know how to release, uh, and then you know how to walk in peace. Uh, God says that walk in peace, uh, and whatever comes your way, that he's going to be right there. He's going to be right there, right there by your side. He's going to be right there by way of Holy Spirit to lead and guide you. He makes all things new. So as you venture into a place of newness, newness means that you've never seen it before. Newness means that you've never worn it before. 
Newness means that you've never walked in it before. As you embrace your newness, God says, trust him. But he says, first you have to release the old. First you have to, re you have to release the old. So as you begin to blow into these balloons and he'll give you a new balloon when you release that one. And he'll give you a bigger balloon when you release that one. Uh, and as you continue to release uh, and the next thing you know is you got balloon, a balloon release uh, that just went global. You got a balloon release that just went to every part uh, of the world. Uh, you got a balloon release that just went to every crack and crevice of the earth. Uh, you got a balloon release of everything that God has placed in you. Out of your belly, everything that God has placed in you, that God is going to cause you to be able to just see how he moves and how he can take one person in one place and put them all over the place. He can take one idea, one message, one song, one poem, one business, one ministry, and make it global. So tonight, I just came to encourage you. Even my dog got excited. I just came to encourage you on tonight to let you know, release in peace. Don't be discouraged. Don't be dismayed. Because the way has already been made. So I encourage you tonight. Trust God, trust God, and embrace the peace that passeth all understanding. Embrace his perfect peace and release. I pray that you were blessed by that message, amen, by that word, and, and tonight I just want you to just really, really just, just think about it. Think about your life. Think about how far God has brought you. Think about the things that he's done for you. Think about the times that he's healed you. Think about when he delivered you. Think about the joy that you felt when you accepted Christ as your personal savior. Go back to the place where you first received him. Think about how he's blessed your children. How he's blessed your home, he's blessed your marriage. Think about how he's blessed you in spite of you. That's something to give him glory right, right there. That's something to give him glory for. He said, in all things rejoice. In all things rejoice. So tonight, let us rejoice as we make the right choice. Let us rejoice as we choose ye this day who we will serve. So tonight, if you don't know Christ as your personal savior, I encourage you tonight to accept him. I encourage you tonight to try Jesus. I encourage you tonight to allow him to do what he desires to do in and through you. I encourage you tonight. And in closing, I want to share this poem entitled never give up for those that are at the verge of giving up but then they notice they can't <laughs> they want to give up but they can't they see themselves giving up but they can't because of the fact that the greater one lives on the inside of you and will not allow you to self-destruct would not allow you to throw in the towel. So this poem is for you tonight. Supporting scriptures, Galatians 6 and 9. Be not weary in well-doing, for in due season you will reap if you faint not. Never give up. Another day of living for Jesus has slowly gone by. And yes, things do happen that make you want to cry. Oftentimes it seems as though no one understands. And maybe you get weak and feel like throwing up your hands. Just remember that God is watching you and he hears your prayers. Trust the Lord and upon him cast all your cares. He knows all that you're going through. And he's promised in his word that he will take care of you. 
You're not on the battlefield alone to win lost souls. And God will give you strength to reach your heavenly goals. We are peculiar people. We stand alone. We're different from the rest. And through Christ Jesus, God has given us his very best. We witness to the world as the Lord has told us to do so. Some listen and accept the Lord while others just say no. The Lord is blessing our lives in ways we've never known. Even in our daily lives, his miracles are being shown. The Lord didn't bring us this far to leave us. So running on for Jesus is certainly a must. The devil tries to tell us that we don't have salvation. Then he tries to defeat us with all types of temptation. But we know that there's power in the blood of Jesus and the devil is a liar. So let's put him under our feet and move on up a little higher. We need to stand on God's love and abide in his word. Keeping our eyes on Jesus for our strength comes from above. Remain strong in the faith and never give up. For we are more than a conqueror through him that loves us. So let's claim the victory for the good works we've done. For you do know that through Christ Jesus, our battles are already won. Amen. I pray that you were blessed by that poem of the day. Amen. I thank God for all of you, for the intercessors that have prayed and stood in the gap for me on tonight. I thank God for you, you, and you. I thank God for those of you that encourage me, that sends me messages, that lifts me up in prayer. I thank God for all of you. Amen. And I just want to say to you tonight to just go with God. In these last and evil days, Jesus is on his way back. It's time for us to get a hold of God and no turning back. Get a hold of God, and I'm telling you, God is about to do some things that's going to blow your mind. I'm talking about little old you, little old me. Just watch what God is about to do. Amen? Amen. I want to make this special announcement tonight. Uh, I want to make this special announcement that uh, I am co-starring in a movie, a Christian movie. That's, that was what I asked God for. I said, God, I want to be in Christian movies. I, I want to be in soul-saving movies. I want to be, you know, in, in, in something that's going to give you glory. I want to be in, in those things where your anointing can flow, where your presence can be there. And I'm co-starring in this Christian movie entitled The Witness. And the premiere is going to be the 29th and 30th of this month in Atlanta, Georgia. Amen. So I thank God. I thank God for the cast. I thank God for the director, the producer, R.A. Weatherspoon Productions. I thank God and give God the glory for the man of God and the woman of God and their vision. Amen. Because God is going to move through this movie, y'all. I'm telling y'all, y'all need to really come and see it. Y'all need to book y'all hotel room. I got the link. Um... On my, on my Facebook page, y'all got to make sure that y'all come and see this movie. Get it, get it while the tickets last. Amen. Because when I tell you the filming of this movie, God moved by his spirit. I'm talking about a tangible anointing. I'm talking about the presence of God. The glory of God fell in the place. I'm telling you, God is doing, he's up to something. And he's about to take over this movie industry. He's about to take over these music videos. He's about to take over this internet. He's about to take over. I'm telling you, it might look like everybody on here saying everything and anything. But you watch God. You watch God. He's about to flood the airways uh but he's about to take over i'm telling y'all get ready get ready amen i thank god for all of you and until next thursday amen thursday night word explosion this is yours truly rosalind d davis the poetic preacher amen continue to let go and let god i love you and god loves you more god bless you and god keep you that's my prayer